We wear everything. Um, I am delighted to be here. Uh, thanks for all coming out of the sunshine. Uh, great talk, Benita. Sets everything in context. We're nearing the end, end, end of this amazing festival. Can I just say, before I start, a huge thanks to all the volunteers of the We Share Fest. You have done an amazing job. It has been a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant few days. I'll hold it closer. Thank, thank you, We Share. You've, you've done brilliantly. So my topic today is about the path towards a pure sharing economy. And as the father of three very young children, I know very well that sharing doesn't always come naturally. Uh, but I also see that every time my children do things together, they have far more fun and they laugh a whole lot more. And it's really important that, that they remember that, and I truly, truly encourage them to share as much as they can. So, what does the future hold for pure sharing? My title at LiveShare is a founder, CEO, and possibilist. And I added the word possibilist because I now truly believe that anything is possible, and it's become possible through collaboration and sharing. That has been massively helped along the way in recent years through the amazing connecting abilities of the internet and now the, the smartphones. Whoa. So my journey started way back in 1998. Um, in fact, it started before that. It started in the early 90s. I went to university. In my first term of university, I quickly ran out of money, mostly on beer, and uh, couldn't afford the train trip home. So I set up a notice board in the student union uh, uh, asking for lifts home and was amazed that within just one day I had three people offering me a lift. Uh, the guy that gave me a lift was a guy called Joe uh, and now almost 20 years later Joe and I are still the best of friends. We had an amazing trip together and when I got back to university I turned that little notice board into being a popular notice board for students. Hundreds of students put their journeys up there every weekend and then a couple of years later as the internet started really arriving at universities and people got emails uh, a friend of mine offered to build me a website to turn that notice board into being a, a website not just for our university but for all students. And Lift Show was born in the summer of 1988 and as, as, I, was, as I said earlier, two weeks before another fairly famous searching website called Google. Bing. So Lift Share's mission. Lift Share is a, is a social enterprise and we are very mission driven. Uh, we want to solve transport poverty which is a real issue in the UK and across the world. In the UK, we've got 20 million people who spend more than 10% of their income on, on transport, and many of those spend more on transport than on food, which is a real problem. Travel is very expensive. And we do this by simply connecting drivers and passengers together going the same way. We are different to, to companies like Blah Blah Car because we are focusing on ensuring that everybody has someone to share a car with, and we don't just focus on long trips. Our focus is mainly on, on shorter trips, people accessing work, people accessing opportunities, people accessing uh, jobs, services, hospitals, universities, education. Whee. This is fun. Try again. We've grown LiftShare by focusing on communities. That's been kind of the secret of our success. We've got hundreds of communities set up, some of them through employers, some through communities, some through uh, charities, some through events, some through festivals. And by focusing on communities, we've, we've built critical mass in areas where, where other schemes just, just simply wouldn't work. And we've built an amazing uh, uh, collection of fantastic local advocates who, who promote and support us. Bing, bing. Our business model is, is fairly unique. Um, we basically take the profits we make from setting up white-labeled B2B services for now over 600 of the UK's greatest companies, and we reinvest them into the innovation we do and also providing a free service for the public so no one has to pay for the service that we provide. And this, again, has enabled us to make sure we can reach out to all the communities. And we work with lots of charity groups, uh, education groups, to make sure that, that anyone in their community can travel. Even though we focused mainly on the UK market, um, the success of LiveShare has kind of spread around the world and anyone can set up a community. And our members over the years have translated it into six different languages and it obviously reaches, as you can see from the map, right, right around the world. But our focus is on the UK and rather than trying to be a dominant player, we're all about trying to share the lessons we've learned so if other companies want to learn from us, from other countries, we're very, very happy to share with them. Just to give you an idea of growth, um, some of you here may be just starting out on your, your adventures into setting up a sharing economy company. LiveShare took three years to make its first penny, um, and this was kind of almost three years into the journey, where taking London, where you've got obviously a lot of traffic, these were the only routes we had available. Uh, so this is a, a moment in time on, 
August the 1st in 2002. Fast forward uh, 12 years, and this is now London. You have a journey on every single route, and over 80% of, uh, of journeys added have at least one really good match, and most have 20 or 30 matches. It's not just limited to urban areas, though. It's spread right across the UK. It's actually really annoying, because this looks like it just focuses on rural area, um, urban areas, but there are actually lines on every single road in the, U in the UK. Uh, if you want to see the video, there's an amazing video showing the graphic uh, on YouTube. Ah, there we go. There we go. That is how it is. Sorry, an extra slide snuck in this presentation. Uh, so this is how it now looks. And you can see lift shares spread, spread uh, across the channel. But now I want to look at the, the, the bigger picture and the reason kind of we're, we're really here. Um, we all know we live on a finite planet and we have finite resources. And without exponential solutions, we're not going to solve the, the problems we, f we, we face. We were concerned at LiftShare that we were just kind of growing incrementally year on year, and we weren't really seeing huge exponential growth in, in our membership. However, the amazing thing about sharing is it is exponential and provides exponential opportunities. Just within our own network, as soon as we hit critical mass of around 250,000 people in the UK, as you'll see from the graph, the number of shared trips every month started to really skyrocket. And last year, we hit over a million shared trips every month and had just over 12 million trips shared last year. And this year, we're looking to, to grow that significantly. So looking at the marketplace, as an early pioneer in this space, it has been so exciting to see more and more companies coming into, in, into it. Uh, the whole peer-to-peer -peer economy is really, really important. Um, but it's interesting how there are thousands now peer-to-peer -peer companies, but only a few that all of us have heard of. And some of those companies you'll, you'll recognize up, up here. And why is it? If you start to try and group these companies, if you start to try and group these companies from the more social to the more financial, starting with gifting, gifting on the left, then swapping, then sharing, then renting, and then trading. To the left-hand side, you have the more socially driven businesses, and to the right-hand side, you've got more financial and profit driven businesses. And as you look on the right-hand side, you'll see companies that you all recognize. On the left, many of you won't recognize several of them, and there are literally thousands more to the left. It's as if all the attention is on the right-hand side. And they are good. All sharing, company, uh, sharing economy companies are brilliant, doing amazing work, but there are thousands that are doing really good work that we just don't know about. But is that such a bad thing? If we're told there was, a, there was a recent PwC report showing that uh, the sharing economy just in the UK is going to be worth £9 billion by 2025. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Well done. However, look to the left. The voluntary society, the real sharing economy where people are sharing for free, giving up their time, just like the amazing We Share volunteers. We are in the UK. That side is worth £100 to £200 billion already. It's not getting any attention. The guys on the right are getting all the attention. The thing on the left, which is beautiful and amazing, is getting all the attention. Imagine if we can increase the, the, the numbers on the left by 5%, 10%. That would be far more beneficial to society than just purely focusing on the right. We all know that sharing changes life for the better when, whenever it occurs. Here's just one example I wanted to pop up from, we saw from Facebook a couple, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've got Cara who, who uh, shared, went on to LiveShare. We, we actually were able to track when she went on to LiveShare. She went on to LiveShare, within five minutes found a match. She and her match are now married. They now have two kids. They share far more than just their car. They share, share their lives together. And that is happening across these, these platforms every day. But, and there's a big but, money is now making a big impact on this market. It's changing attitudes. It's changing attitudes towards trust, towards risk, towards exclusion and liability. We have very first-hand example of this. LiftShare has now been going for 17 years. We have had 30 million trips shared, and we have never had a reported incident. We have another company we tried a couple of years ago, Carloco. It was going for four months. It only had 100 users, and immediately it started having uh, attempts of fraud, liability insurance, all sorts of issues because there was money involved. There were different motives involved. I thought we'd be a, after a very similar audience with very similar customer support requirements. Wrong. As soon as you introduce money, you introduce a change in attitudes and behavior. Raising money also changes attitudes. It changes attitudes towards the media, towards government, towards market, and towards values. Um, look at the media. The media give all the attention to the guys who raise lots of money. If you haven't raised 20 million, you're no longer relevant, even if you're doing something amazing and beautiful that has far wider values to society than, than just the financial value. 
So to, to, to end with, is the sharing economy the little guy anymore? And if the sharing economy is the little guy, who's the big guy? Who's the big, who's the, the big beast? Who's the slow mover? If the little guy is a sharing economy, if the big beast is a voluntary sector, then we're in trouble. If the big beast is, is the, the uh, financial individualistic society owning uh, monster that, that, that between the sharing economy and the voluntary economy we're trying to disrupt, then that's fantastic. But I question right now whether the, the, the sharing economy, particularly with the money in the sharing economy, is purely focusing on the, on the market side of the, of, the, of the world. It is also going after the voluntary side. And people in the voluntary side are starting to expect financial transactions rather than just giving their time freely. And I think that's really sad. Hopefully, hopefully, it's not uh, becoming the big beast. Because as we see, as more and more money pours into it, we are in danger of becoming the, the, the whole thing that we're trying to actually fix. And, and to really bring sharing back to the economy, we've got to focus on societal value rather than financial value. Just to remind you about the value of volunteers, UK alone, I don't dread to think what it, or, or I'm excited to think what it's valued around the world, 100, 200 billion pounds. Imagine if we can focus some of the innovation and effort that's going on in the sharing economy with, uh, uh, into that space. We can, we can really create massive change. We. I'm over. <laughs> Thank you very much.